But I guess with with um, America's food uh, agriculture being hit by was it fifty eight percent down? Is is it because they can make more money by selling it than selling it domestically? Well, it's just the the, the plant the planting is atrocious this year. The, mo- the most rain we've ever had in America. It's the biggest floods that were ever recorded in America. We've got inland sea forming. You got all kind of in- inland river deltas forming. The river, the Mississippi River, is starting to break through and reform and go in a different direction in some areas. Or they're trying to shore it up so the Mississippi River doesn't divert itself. Now, there's some serious things happening back there with this kind of flooding and the loss of the stored grain. You know, some analysts say it's five percent of the lost stored grains that we had last year, and then others are saying it was thirty-eight percent of lost grain that was stored. Like I went and saturated in the all-time biggest floods ever. Uh, the planting season, I, I'm, I'm forecasting right now, and I do, I'm doing a corn report, and I have been for the last couple of weeks here, investing in corn and these kind of thing. Because I uh, going back to the historical charts, we need to go back to precedents in history. Late 1960s, 68, and we go back to 1938. These are the two lowest planting periods ever for America. And you got to realize, 1938 was not a lot of farming going on comparatively to what we have going on in the year 2019. The planting figures are lower, lower than 1938 by 10 million acres, lower. Wow. This is some incredible stuff we're getting into. This is uncharted, unprecedented territory. But yet again, the, the commodities prices aren't rising. It's just really interesting. I think there's more of a control mechanism going in than there is the monetary mechanism because it seems they just don't care about the money. Because Christian over at Ice Age Farmer was saying, David, you're looking at it from a logical mind. He says, there, it's all about the control and the perception of enough food. Money is going to be worthless in a couple of years anyway. It's the perception management of stability is going to be way more important until the year that they can't really deliver the food, which is going to be now, because they were talking about rationing corn going into the ethanol plants already. And I thought, huh, when's the last time that happened? 2011 and 1993, or sorry, 1994 and five. They didn't have enough corn to supply all the domestic demand and meet the ethanol demand in 2011. So what they did was they curtailed back and they rationed how much corn I uh, was going into the ethanol producers. Oh, yeah. So we're already seeing this. They're starting to call for uh, corn rationing for ethanol producers. And they're at the first week of taking a look. And uh, some of these articles are saying, no, wait a second, you inspectors out there. You guys are looking at the two acres that came up out of the 300 acres that didn't get planted, totally flooded. And you're basing your entire projection estimates on two acres that you surveyed that's up. But what about the other 300 acres or 3,000 acres around you that's still under complete water and never got planted, will have zero production, and you're basing the entire harvest off two acres that you're surveying that looks kind of decent that got in on a on a high dry spot. And this is what's happening with these corn reports. And this oh, is what yeah, I don't so, like. I actually so, disagree on I'm calling it out. So what's this window all about? This is my melting pot home to different kinds of content, the things that interest me, products that I'm presently doing or have been involved with. Have a thirst for knowledge, inspiration, adventure, and discovery. There's presentations, talks, completed film projects, documentary material, edits of some of the live performances that have been the videographer and the editor behind, accessible how-tos and blog content. I have a passion for exploring our curious world. That has led to the creation of the video and audio podcast that I produce and host called Our Curious World, about having genuine conversations with guests across various topics, engaging with people, inspired by the Joe Rogan experience and Coast to Coast AM. I love talking about the things that have us asking questions and learning along the way. We really do live in interesting and fascinating times that join me on this journey figuring stuff out and producing material along the way. Hit up a like, a subscribe and join the conversation.